It would be very easy for me to simply say I have always liked the mechanical designs of Makoto Kobayashi. I could very well just spend the next 10 minutes listing cool designs I like, but it is fundamentally more important with this next episode to tell you instead the function of Makoto Kobayashi. Because Makoto Kobayashi is something important. The role he and other artists like him provide in the larger genres they are part of is vital. You see, it's a function of how art is made. I started last time with Okuara because he was instrumental in founding and forming a good chunk of the field of mechanical design pertaining to mecha. But once you have this mainstream, what happens? Once you have someone do something well and set a convention of success, what does that lead to? The answer is it leads to a slow repetition of that cycle. You can see this clearly in really any art form, and this partially is down to a combination of capitalism and consumerism. In a nutshell, when a new trend in media is created, it combines many disparate elements into that new thing. It formalizes just what that thing is from those parts. For Mecha of the early 80s, that was styles like Okoara's blocky quasi-military pulling designs, and Kawamori's transforming Macross Jet F-14s. They were the hot go-to trends. But here is the problem. Once companies have gone through the throwing darts at a board creative period, they want to kind of settle into what they see as working. They don't want to take creative risk, because creative risk means potential loss. And I don't want to lose me money, Spongebob me boy! This also gets combined with the consumers generally being conditioned to expect certain things from a genre. But what happens when the cycle repeats itself? What happens when 5 years go by, or 10 years go by, or 20 years go by? It begins to stagnate. The genre cycles back into itself, and more or less burns out. People complain about seeing the same thing while being unwilling to change for anything new. And unless on the corporate side someone is willing to risk failure, which, newsflash, they usually don't, they are not going to rock the boat. They're going to milk this thing till it goes dry. So. In art, and in mecha in particular, what does this mean? It basically means the artistic fucking version of the Irish potato famine. It means the boring same ideas get eaten up and shit out with diminishing creativity each time. The memes and genes of the very art form itself are made stagnant and kind of moot. So now we can return to what I've always loved about Makoto Kobayashi and his mecha design and why his role in this ecosystem of art is vital. Because in function, Kobayashi is a special artist because he's on the outside. He does not get the big notoriety, he does not get the big super headlines, but that's not super important. See, humans need art, right? But this process stagnates things. And, as a metaphor, plants and animals of this earth need nitrogen, right? But most nitrogen is stuck in this useless friggin' dinitrogen bullshit. And so basically, in the ecosystem of art, Kobayashi is the nitrogen-fixing bacteria of the art world. Artists like him go out of their way to take those ideas and concepts outside of their normality and infuse them into their preferred genre. They're like cross-pollinators, or the RNA viruses of the art world. As he outright said in one interview, In terms of other mecha designers I was influenced by, it would have to be Sid Mead. I had books of his including Sentinel, and he made me aware that there was something like him, someone who created the world as he did. Looking at Sid Mead's work, however, it was not that I learned directly from it, but more the fact that someone could do something really different from existing designs or concepts. So what I learned from it was to try and create something different from others. Something original. I felt I should try this myself. And I think this really typifies the approach Kobayashi takes with his designs, just in everything. His forms are so dramatically different in proportion. His material references, his weighting, are so out there from quite a bit of the most generic mecha design. The others like Kobayashi, the more outsider types do exist, but they'll get their own videos later and they have their own issues and angles of approach. It's not easy to do this. It's not easy to take this more creative, but also riskier and more difficult road. There are others like Kobayashi, but I think Kobayashi really specializes in this constant shifting. A lot of these designs gain just this really distinct personality in how they are really approached. For example, his work on Giant Robo was in that of redesigning older mechanical designs. But you can see his personality really adds something. Giant Robo's new proportions are absolutely fucking titanic. As I mentioned in my Super Heavyweights video, Giant Robo is a walking iron fortress in this OVA. 
But even beyond that, the other machines from that all carry this simple but fantastic twist on the character they convey with their bodies and material. Considering the fact that these designs came from decades beforehand, their reinvention of that older aesthetic style is quite impressive, especially when you consider they inherently do not lose it in their reinvention. Not just the mecha, but many of the other mechanical designs as well. Really, I can't emphasize enough, as an artist, one of the most challenging things you might have to do is to reinvent an older, well-known, well-liked art style into a new one. Makoto Kobayashi did a great job here on this effort. As another example of his alternate talents, there is his work for the Venus Wars movie. While there aren't any bipedal mecha directly, there are a wide variety of vehicles, and his mechanical design work here really shows off how varied his talents are. The gigantic, clambering, crushing octotanks that rip through the city, the nimble monobikes, and the other various military vehicles present in the fight. All of them really show off just how diverse Kobayashi's talents could be when it comes to what he can design and what he applies his distinct approach to. From that same interview, As he said, the starting point of my design work is that I want to make something unique. How can I create something unique? If there are cars and airplanes, looking at them, I try and think what kind of unique aspect I can bring to that. As I am designing a mecha, making them look more like living things, something inorganic given an organic aspect, then that would be unique. As another perfect example, you can really see this in Kobayashi's contributions to Zeta Gundam. Zeta Gundam produced an entire new generation of mecha designers with this huge list of mecha. It required quite a good number of new artists. And of them, only perhaps Nagano came close to just how out there Kobayashi's could be. Designs like the Boundock seem so intensely, purposefully weird and different. Even a simple redesign, like one of my personal favorite versions of the Zaku, the Solomon Express version, is just, I mean, my god, it's just so imposing. It's hefty. It's gonna launch a TAC nuke shoulder launched Kasaba Howitzer at your spaceship point blank and then shake it off afterwards like it was nothing. And this is also perfect because in comparison, we've seen just how formulated Gundam has gotten over the years with entry after entry otherwise repeating so many elements for better or worse. As an even more worse example, look at how Macross and Kawamori has more or less frozen up in his design ability from his heyday. Makoto Kobayashi's contributions are still constantly out there. They're still constantly shifting when you compare them to that. Of course, I don't think I can talk about Kobayashi without mentioning Dragon's Heaven. Finding Dragon's Heaven randomly on YouTube almost 10 years ago now was an absolute treat. It's a weird, one-off OVA that was really just the byproduct of a weird production process. But in a lot of ways, it really embodies all of this. It really opened my eyes to what could be possible beyond my limited ideas of mecha. It's beautiful. It's one of a kind. It's like if anime was a genre that had emerged from European comics instead of manga. And Kobayashi is very open about that choice to be distinct. As for the Mobius-type art style in the anime version of Dragon's Heaven, I had a lot of his books. And I thought that if they could move, then wouldn't that be great? Obviously, I wasn't the only one on the animation staff that thought this, as many of the animators took a very strong interest. And so there it is again, the need to pull in outside influences, the need to work new DNA and inspirations into the genre, the move to do more than just wallow in what is already celebrated within Mecha. These are the things that breathe new life into any form of art, but Mecha is no exception here. And man, as an example, I, I really do adore Cheyenne's design. It really typifies a good chunk of prime Kobayashi. It's asymmetrical. It's almost more anthropod than pure machine. It is comprised of a grounding sense of shape and waiting. The live-action opening for Dragon's Heaven. I just felt like getting into something like that. There wasn't any budget put aside for that sequence. I paid for it out of my own pocket, simply because I really wanted something like that in the production. Unfortunately, I couldn't keep the life-size models as they were just too big. If you want to know where all this physically comes from, I think it really is the models. Kobayashi is and has been someone who worked heavily with modeling, and it was more or less his entry into mechanical design. And when you think about it in depth, this makes perfect sense because in a way, this is the opposite of Okawara. Whereas Okawara was someone who worked top-down, concept to design, through toys and the like, Kobayashi works instead bottom-up. By manipulating the final forms of machines, in the way the models and kits are built, you develop instinctually a very different approach. 
Then, by kit bashing and messing with models even further, you get this physical feel very separate from just drawing them. It's one of the things I independently ended up noticing myself, when I would just mess around with models and wiring, and it felt so different to the more sterile approach of just mental images and pens and paper. It made you really be able to turn this machine around in the real world and take its details in. If you want to design machines well, I'm telling you now, if you want to design well generally, mecha or whatever, I really recommend doing this at least once. And even now, Kobayashi has not stopped. In this decade, I have seen him shift still. I mean, he's not getting younger, but he keeps doing it. He's never settled in easy. He has continued to experiment with geometry and patterns, more distinct and thought out line work. Repeating use of pattern, repeating use of kanji as a kind of pattern. You can see examples of this in his recent focus on battleship designs, and his work on the remake of Space Battleship Yamato, a franchise he was involved with in designing for several decades now, even crossing paths with some of Sid Mead's design works. In his modern work, you can really see the shift to this idea of repeating kanji and fine ornamentation. His power armor suits as well, from Yamato 2202, I especially enjoy. They really get back to that Starship Troopers kind of feel. And weirdly enough, I ran into his design work in World of Warships, as he did several special skins for the Roma and other ships, for example. And so that is all why, to me, Kobayashi and artists like him are fantastic. They are not just guys who are purposefully just weird, who make weird, lumpy, misshapen mecha or machines. They are artists who begin the process of injecting new, different DNA and ideas into art forms. They are the ones who continue to imbue and renew art with their work. For me, it has always been a reminder not to let any comfortable, simple idea of design exist. There's always a weird new direction. There's always a road not taken that is truly out there with its material reference or form. Mecha right now is sadly in a bad slump of repetition and burned out patterns. If it's ever going to restart, it's going to need a new generation of artists with Kobayashi's approach to renew it and move it forward. <laughs>